Kia ora and welcome to Hunting Aotearoa. This week we're off to Ruatahuna to hunt wild pig with a few of the locals in the Urawera Ranges. Then we join up with Henry Flavel and a few of the local young tamariki for a bit of pest eradication, night shooting, possums and wallabies. So join us as we go hunting Aotearoa. in there boy, pure water. Kia ora and welcome to Hunting Aotearoa. This time we're in Tuhoi country, Ruatahuna to be exact. And this time we're going hunting with a guy named Ron Tahi and a few of his cobbers. We're going to go hunting Tuturu. Back into the native. Up the hills. Down the other side. Kaore he ngā here e rite ana ki te urewera, huri noa i te motu mo te whakangau, i nga kē, ngā piki, me ngā heke o tēnei ngā here here. It's a good place to hold off the dogs. That's uh, why they, when they get in a bit uh, hassle, they'll race to one of these things and back up into it. I tēnei rā, Ke te whakangau mātou ko Ron Tahi, me ana hoa a Graham Rawako Ching ki roto o Ruatāhuna. Ko tino mātou a Ron ki te whakangau i nei pai maunga, mai i te wai a ia e nohi nohi ana. What's this area called there, Uncle? Where are you hunting? Oh, this area here is uh, Taumaha. You know, Taumaha, heavy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the name of this block. That's what my legs feel like at the yeah. moment, Taumaha. Ah. <laughs> I saw my koro uh, do uh, as, a, as a young fellow, I think it must have been about, around about six, seven. I used to ride around with him on the back, holding on to him on his, around the back there of the horse, going pig hunting. When the dogs uh, open up, oh well, we ride right up. Just like this, oh well, like, like that bush we were coming up. Yeah country like that. We ride right up to, to where the pig is, where the dogs are holding it. Yeah. Oh, well, the dogs are, are bailing. That's one thing with their dogs. It's uh, a lot different to, 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 to my dogs now anyway. Their dogs got ears, you know. They, they, they work on commands. You know, a bailer is a bailer. Holders are holders. When the bailer opens up, oh, well, that's what he does. He just holds the pig up. Till, uh, till you get there, all the dogs are there and they're, they're all waiting for the command. Grab it, or whatever the kōrero is. Hopukina! They dive in, grab the It doesn't matter how big it is. And then he, he tells me to cut the hamstring. Yeah, to cut it with the... Well, well being a young fella, well, when it's small, but the old fellas, you know, they never go with a blunt, blunt axe or a blunt knife or blunt anything. Yeah, they're nice, uh, razor sharp. No, just one swipe, right? You'll pick down right like there. Then he calls the dog. I, I, I go back, grabs me back on the back of the horse. He calls the dogs off and let the pig uh, move down the hill and use the dogs to make sure that it stays on track. Yeah, riding through the, through the bush out in the open and uh, drives it right where there's some good wood. 
plenty of wood. Don't have to to go anywhere to get it. And then he calls the dogs back on, grabs it, holds it, and gets off him. Sticks it. That's what I uh, admire about the, the old people. Eh? They make things easy. You know, things are simple. I whakatēnā tēnā mātou i te kitenga mai o ngā tohu hou, i pau te rima meneti, ka tahi, ka tutu te puehu i te mahi a ngā kuri. I hopu kina te tahi punu a poaka e ngā kuri, I te nui ngō te wā, ka wai hō te poaka. Engari, ka hari atu i te mea, he kai tonu mā mātou mā ngā kuri rānei. He kraua katoa ngā rākau nei, ka mutu he momo kai tonu mā te tangata. Pērā ki te rākau hinau, i tohu a e ron. There's the tree there, the big one. The old people used to make their bread out of hinau, hinau bread. They uh, grind the kernel inside into a powder, and uh, that's their flour. And they just mix it with wild honey and then bake it in the, in the hangi overnight. I whakaaro ake a Graham, kia heke tātou i te pai maunga, whakangau haere, kia tai atu ai ki te awa. I koa katoa au ki tērā i te mea, he pai ake ki te heke iho, i te peki ake. Tomaha was the name of that place, eh? Yeah, Tomaha. And predominantly just pigs up there, or what? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, possums, uh, deer, red deer, mainly. What about some other blocks here, Uncle? We hunted Tomaha this morning. What other blocks do you frequent? Oh, the area is, uh, well, we've got uh, right here the Mimiha, uh, up towards the Mimiha, that's up towards the Huiro from here where we're sitting. Well, generally deer, uh, the odd pigs, but it's sort of going into the high country there, birch, beech, you know, that, that type of possums. And then uh, just up this creek here, over to the south, we've got the Wayo and the Wayo Valley, the Wayo River, the Wayo Valley, uh, notable for its uh, good fishing, trout fishing. Love the bush. And it's a lifestyle I've loved my kids to learn. You know, it, it's, it's already in them now. Yeah. They know a pai hamu, they eat the pai hamu, they eat the pork, they eat the beer. It, it's, it's kai, you know, they're not fussy. And it's a lifestyle I've loved them to live, you know, to, to enjoy. If I'm hungry for venison, we can walk out our back door and, you know, bang, we've got a beer. You know, it, it's excitement, it's fitness, you know, it's everything, it's just our life, it's the way we live and happy, happy as. <laughs> they, they get in really good condition uh, when there's plenty of hino uh, over season, because uh, on the windy days, real windy days, uh, some will fall on the ground and then uh, pigs will come, have a feed, carry on, they know the next big wind, oh well, there'll be some more on the ground, they'll be under those trees, so that's a good place to target uh, when you're pig hunting. If you know where the, the hino groves are or trees are, you don't really need much fat, just just a thin bit of fat uh, on the pig from the hino. Oh, that's enough. Yeah, it's uh, a lot richer than a normal, not too many uh, uh, people go and shoot deer here. But that's a, a lot of the, the young fellas or the next generation down, not interested. Eh? Not interested in going there for... No idea, eh? Well, huh. they might have an idea, but they're not interested. Uncle, yeah. it's been an honour and a pleasure, and I hope you'll invite me back for the raw. I'll bring my eye. I'll think about you it. You bring the horse. <laughs> I'll think about it. Graham? I might have a chopper. 
Well, I look forward to having a bit of possum stew with you and I come down next time, mate. Next time up, mate. <laughs> Ching, awesome, mate. Nice to meet you and see a woman of the land, a woman. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the hell. Well, there you have it, people. People of the land, hunt for the pot. Catch you next time on Hunting Aotearoa. Ko kupe he rangatira no Hawaii, ko e hoki te kai toro tuatahi o Aotearoa. I a rātou e hiana, i kainga katoa tia ngā mōunu, engari kāre rātou e mōhi o i ngautia. Ka haere ki te hi, ka ngaro anō ngā mōunu. Ka tahi ka haere atu ki te tohu. Ka tākina tia e ia he karakia, i rungo e ngā matau, ngā ho, me ngā mōunu. I mua i tō rātou haere anō ki te hi. Nā te karakia nei ka mōhi o, ko te whekei nohi nohi e kai ngāna ngā mōunu. Engari, nga miri te kakara te whekea muturangi i kohetetia. Ka kōrero atu a kupe ki a muturangi, me te ki atu patua tō whekea ki a matu. Ka re a muturangi i whakarau, ki tōna whakaaro, nō rātou nō ngā whekea kē tēnei rohe o te moa. Nā tēnei, ka whakarite a kupe e tōna waka mō te patu te mō kai a muturangi. Ka tai ki te tauranga, ka tuku iho ngā ho. I te huhuti tanga ake, ka kaha te whai o ngā whake nohi nohi i te mōunu. Te tāinga ki runga, ka patua katoatia e kupe mā. I mātaki mai te whake nei, a ka ahu atu ki waho tonu o te mōunu. I runga ngā hoe i te tā whiwhirangi. Ko tāna mahi, hei matatū te whake nei. Ka hoki a kupe ki te tiki he kai me wetahi atu hanga. Ki tōna whakaaro, kā re kore ka roa tā rātou whai i te whake a muturangi. Ka tatari te whake nei ki a whai mai ngā waka. Ka tahi ka tere tā na whakawhiti ki te pairau. I te mutunga, ko ora takina te whake nei i a kupe mā ki a Aotearoa. A kāti, ko mutu anō wā tātou koru mō tēnei pō, Nā reira, nō hora mai o a koutou wā kai. Pest eradication, possums and wallabies. And joining me tonight is the famous president, <laughs> president of the, what's that stand for? BTP. BTP. Want to poach. No, no I want to provide. Yeah, yeah, provide, yeah, provide, yeah. provide some. Henry, get up, get up, Ray. How about you introduce your whanau to me? Well, this is my son, Robert. All the seven years old, he loves us what we're doing. Try and teach him everything about it. This is Emmanuel. Emmanuel's been doing well at school, so hey, I'll take them out. And this one over here is Felix, all the way from Ngati Pikiao. And uh, another reward for him to come out hunting with us. And this is Mikey, the cuzzy. So, what's the cup up behind these young fellas, cuz? Well, some kids, bro. You know, um, at school. They got behaviour problems, mainly Phoenix. Bad behaviour. But as a reward, as a reward, we try and give them aims. Look, boy, if you can control your temper or your or your language, your real, so long, we'll take you out. 
You know, we'll take you hunting and mate, I'll tell you what, it's done magic. It's done magic for this boy and the Phoenix. Yeah. And um, even the teachers have noticed a difference. Uh, the SIFs, his uh, case officer, is giving us a ring and look, what have you done to this young fella? Thanks to Mikey and, and Rob, who's not here today. Um, it's just a name for them to set. Give them another side of life. There's not only what they're doing outside of, the, outside of ours, but what we do on our time. You know, we make them part of the family. Tell us a bit about the, the possum market now. The possum market? Well, at the moment, it's, it's up there. It's, the money is up there. I mean, 15 possums, you start plucking the fur out. Apparently, you know, it's about, works out about 15 possums, and it's about either 75 to $95 a kilo of fur. You know, and hey, what's wrong with that? You're doing yourself a favor by making pocket money for the kids, a little bit of spending money for the kids. Plus, you're getting rid of the possums that are the pest here that we're after. And there's the wallabies, you know, you skin the wallabies, take the back legs out, give the rest of the dogs, you skin the, you know, skin the fur off the, or the skin off the uh, wallabies, take the back legs out, nice too. It's beautiful. Like Henry was saying, it's a different side of life. Uh, we're trying to show the boys, you know, getting them away from the streets, trying to pull them away from the drugs, the alcohol that's in town and their, their, their peers that are... That are, uh, the peer pressure they're getting in, in, in town from the um, mates and whatnot. Um, things we, that we do here is uh, after a hunt, you know, I'll get them back to school and we'll try and put it into a story. And um, you know, we'll write it up in a story and then we'll read it to the class and we'll get the boys to read it to the class. And it, yeah. So they enjoy it, they love it. Yeah. Get some good stories out of them too. <laughs> Cousin Howard over there on the gun with the boy standing right next to him, shining the light, and you better not miss us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, possums, possums. Should we go and get some possums? What do you reckon, Cus? Let's get out of here. Mata e chimata ana ki te haere ki te whakanga i te pō I ki te au i te rereke o ngā āhua o ngā taiohi Ko te hihiri o te whakangau, ko a pāngi e te katoa Ki hai i roa i patu e mātou te tuatahi mo te pō Whai muri i ngā whakatairanga, ko te whakangau tonu, i runga, i āantina o te roa Nei rā, ko te nuinga o a tātou tamariki e mā takitaki ana i te pō a ka whakāta i te nei haora o te pō. Engari, mō enei tamariki, ko a wai maria ki te puta atu mō te tahi pō whakangau i te pai o rātou mahi kura, mahi kainga hoki. He tangata haere ngā here a Henry ki te whakangau. I nga tata nei, i mate te tahi o ona kuri i tana kainga i te tahi paihama i pāngia e te tēneiti i ruia e te tari papa atawhai there is not one hunter out here that likes 1080 because we all bring our dogs up as pups. They become part of our family. We take them out to the blooming bush and they pick up a possum there or, you know, they just chew on something. All dogs scavenge and they just chew something. It could be five, even four years, four or five months old. Bang, our dogs are dead. It's like losing one of our own kids. We have, a, we have a tangi for our dogs and we start getting wild. We're getting wilder and wilder with this 1080 drop. Not only is it killing the pigs, the dogs, it's killing the birds, the deer. All the, everything that we're trying to catch and eat is going to waste and our dogs are getting killed, getting slaughtered on it. And there's a lot of pig hunters out there. A lot of deer stalkers will stand up for this too, I know it. I mean, you, you live for catching pigs to fill up your freezer. And, and then you go and lose a dog to 1080, uncaused, you know, because a possum can take a, you know, a chew of a carrot, a, t a poison carrot, walk 5Ks and then die. You know, so we, even though we're away from the area, our dogs are still getting hammered by the, by the dead carcass. Because the poison doesn't just kill it, it stays in the bones, even when the flesh has been taken off. I believe, bro, that um, you just 
get, it, get the hunters in there, the possum guys, and, and let them go. And, you know, they know the bush better than anybody else, these pig hunters, possum hunters, deer stalkers, you know, they know it. They don't go in there getting lost if they know the area. They're not going to go anywhere they don't know. I mean, I was told, I don't know how factual it is, that one possum on a 1080 drop is worth $27 or thereabouts. Why not let the pig hunters go in there or, or possum hunters, possum trappers, you know, and cull them out, you know? I, I guarantee you'll get a lot of people off the unemployment line even because they're allowed access into the forest. Give them the access. Get the money, because the possum is uh, what money in the bank. One possum is starting to fill your pocket up, your pocket up with money, food in the cupboard. So when you put the gun up, make sure the light's in front of you. Eh? Just look up higher, look up higher, Mike. What is it? Yeah, you missed it, Henry! <laughs> Awesome night. Awesome night spotting with the old BTP. Many meanings for that name, but awesome cuz. <laughs> I think the buzz I got out of tonight seeing these young fellas' eyes light awesome. up. Awesome, awesome, yeah. all right. Yep. One shot each, except the driver. The <laughs> 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 <Don't> big <make> miss. <laughs> Twice. But once again, cuz, thanks, uh, thanks oh. for bringing us out and showing us, uh, especially showing us these young fellas enjoying themselves. Yeah. On a Friday night, even, too. <laughs> hey? Thank you, boy. Keep hunting, eh? Keep doing your ABCs. <laughs> <laughs> Kev, see Welcome, you next Kev. time, mate. Yep, for okay. sure. For sure. And we'll see you next time for another great hunt on Hunting Aotearoa. <laughs> Kia ora. This week's tip, the middle tree or brown pine. Now in the old days our people just actually wore over these trees, not so much for the tree itself, but for the different kararehe that this tree attracted. Just after the raw, berries were produced, and that attracted the kereru, and once the berries fell to the ground, that also attracted the old wild pork. Now this tree also produced rongoa. The oil from this tree was used for cuts, abrasions, and also eczema. Now this tree has actually got green leaves and brown bark, but unless it's in berry, it's very hard to identify. And the berry is actually the size of a five cent piece. Now here's another little tip about this tree and what you can do with the berries. You go to the market, buy a chicken, stuff the berries in the chicken, cook them up, taste just like a chicken should when it's been eaten middle. Kia ora. Many thanks to Ron, Graham and Ching for a very memorable hunt in the heartland of Tuhoi. But Ron, I'll be back to pick my ring up that fell out on one of those hills as we were ascending and descending. And Henry Flavel and the BTP Club, congratulations on your lovely work you're doing with our rangatahi. So join us next week as we go hunting Aotearoa. Ron, Graham and Ching for a very memorable hunt Now this horse... <laughs> I'm having a rough day, mate. It fell out of one of those hills while climbing and descending. And to Henry Flavel and the BTP Club, congratulations. <laughs> I had it!
Then we join up with Henry Flevel. <laughs> Henry, Henry, <laughs> Henry, Henry, Henry. Henry.